All right, so this is going to be a quick video on my new mouse settings and why I settled on these settings and the logic behind them. So if you've done any uh, signal processing work, you've heard of the idea of aliasing and the fact that you need to sample at twice the rate of your signal. But I would say set that aside, and I'll explain why. Your mouse and your frames and whatnot are discrete time signals, which means a signal is sent with, with some sort of gap in between. And when you apply that concept of analog signals to discrete, it doesn't really mix very well. And I'll give an example. Say your mouse was reporting at 120 hertz and your monitor refresh rate was 240. Now, what would happen? You send a mouse report, it updates a frame, you see it, and that's good. But then the next frame, you don't send the report, you update the frame, and you see the old one. And that happens over and over again. And so the effect is that it stutters, as it basically pauses on the same input. But that's you sampling, aka putting a frame out, twice the rate of the signal, aka a mouse report. And the effect is quite terrible. So that's why you can throw that out for you know servers, mouse inputs, frames, and you know the human eye. It's not the, the strongest principle to hold on to. So alright, so this is a chart showing the effects of motion sync and i have to give a shout out here to optimum tech he did the work on this and made these images so that's where these came from and you can refer to his video if you want to see his full explanation of what's happening here but we can see here on a quite good sensor with no motion sync there is some jitter in the signal recording and it's not very smooth but then you come over to the Viper V2 Pro and it's perfectly smooth almost. And it has very nice reporting with no jittering. And then if you go to the next image, this is the effective polling rate here. So for the G Pro Superlight, sometimes it's a thousand, sometimes it's two thousand, sometimes it's zero, but it's very unusable to synchronize to because for a synchronous signal and to have very little delay, you want the signal to be smooth, really. And that's what we get over here. And you can ignore this little dip that's just affected the testing. But basically here, we have a very smooth 1000 hertz with very little deviation. And this we can use. So this is the software and the hardware syncing this and then we get this signal out, and now we use this to sync. Now, uh, just some background on my hardware. I have a 240 Hz monitor, and I run at about 500 FPS, and I can get that consistently. So that'll provide some context for the next concept that I'm going to talk about. And I also have reduced buffering off. This is a game called Overwatch, if you haven't heard of it, but these are the relevant settings. So here's what I did. The first thing I did that's somewhat unrelated, I turned up my DPI to a nice power of two just for the benefits of you know hardware bit shifting and whatnot. Powers of two tend to be where you want to be. Now you can technically put this to whatever you want, I think in intervals of 100, but I just found a power of two and that's what I went with. And then I downscaled this using a raw Excel program, and you can find that. And, and I, I made a video on that before, but basically I just scaled the DPI back to 1600. So effectively it's 1600, but high DPI has lower input lag and better sensor tracking for these sensors. And the second part that's the reason for this video that's very important is the polling rate. Now, I do have the uh, Viper V2 Pro, and I can go up to uh, 8,000 hertz. It might only be 4,000, but higher than 1,000, which is the stock standard. But I'm, you can see here, I've set it to 500. 
And the reason for this, the 500, is the FPS that I can get. So we'll talk about this in a second, but you want to choose the frequency that matches your FPS. Now, for most people, you're not going to be getting a thousand. And a lot of people are going to get over 125, but if, if that's you, you might want this. But most people are going to land roughly at 500. Uh, this number doesn't matter too much for the sinking, but it, it is nice if you can get to that 500 or close to it to try and match that. And the last setting that makes this possible is this high precision mouse input. Pretty much all the games have this nowadays where your inputs aren't limited to either your frame rate or the server's tick rate. But you can truly report, you know, a thousand hertz, two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, and higher to the server and it will use those inputs, you know, whenever it gets around to it. But that's another matter. But some games don't support higher inputs, but most games support higher than tick rate or refresh rate inputs. If you don't have this setting, then yeah, this video is not going to apply to you. But all right, now on to uh, Radeon. And I use Radeon, but the setting for NVIDIA is low latency mode, I think. It does basically the same thing. But you can see here, dynamically adjust frame timing to reduce the lag between user inputs and visual responses. So let's break that apart. It can control the frame timing so that it matches the input timing, which means what you see is very close to the latest update of your mouse. And this is what's and this is another factor that's making all of this possible. If you didn't have this, there would be too much aliasing. You'd have some input lag. What you see wouldn't match the latest inputs. So the fact that this is a thing makes this concept possible. And the, the next setting is this enhanced sync. I think they opened this up to NVIDIA, but if this isn't a thing, then yeah, the video might not apply to you but basically without limiting the frame rate it tries to synchronize the the frames to your refresh rate and that's pretty helpful but as i mentioned i have a 240 hertz monitor and i'm running at 500 rendered frames per second so in theory every other frame should get put on my monitor and every frame should have an input but what that means is there's a frame out there that I don't see that has an input. But you can kind of feel that out as long as it's consistent. And that frame is indeed reported to the server because of the high precision mouse inputs. So what we've effectively done is, is synchronized everything to my inputs and my visuals. And what that does. It might have some input lag, you know, I won't deny that, but input lag is not near as, as important, I would argue, as input lag consistency. And you can roughly test this, you know, if there's some programs, and I've, you know, tried these, where you can simulate input lag, and if you don't simulate it to the same value, it feels terrible. If you simulate to the same value, you can compensate. And there's some, you know, downsides, but that's definitely way better than in any inconsistency, even in like the orders of five milliseconds. Um, and if you've ever played on a high ping server, but it's a stable connection, you know that you can hit most of your shots pretty well. But if you play on a bad internet connection and there's like spikes and whatnot, it becomes unplayable. Even though there's only tiny spikes, it's still unplayable. That's basically the concept here. Synchronized inputs that are consistent and you never miss an input. Like the, the visuals that you see always match 
in input. That is what is important here. And so that's why I've done this. And, you know, I've tried it out in game and it just feels incredible. Now, if there is any sort of aliasing, then this might not work as well. So if you can't get 500 FPS, which you can see, in order to get that 500 FPS, I've turned on dynamic rendering. I've sharpened the image up so it still looks good. And I'm, I have a lower FOV. My settings for the quality are on the lower side. But I did this to get that 500 FPS because I think if you can have stable 500, that's going to have some benefit. And yeah, it, it feels amazing. If you agree with the logic, you can try it out and tell me what you think in the comments. But that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.